and welcome. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to a new vlog. Welcome to anyone who is new here. I'm Andrea. Hi. I don't usually introduce my vlogs this way, but I probably should. <laughs> and to anyone who's not new here, welcome back. It's good to have you guys back. It is Monday, but it is a holiday Monday. It is Memorial Day here in the US. I've got a nice big mug of cold brew <laughs> with ice and I'm using my new mug, which I'm noticing actually kind of matches my outfit today. That was semi-intentional. I was thinking, oh, I wanna use my new mug. And then I looked at my outfit, I'm like, oh, and I'll kind of match. And sticking with the florals, um, and what this vlog is going to start with, I'm also going to be doing my planner. I'm gonna pop a YouTube video on. I think I'm gonna watch Jessica Rose Williams' new video. It's only about 23 minutes, and I'm gonna do my planner. So I need to grab this. Got some loose papers in here. I need to figure out something for loose papers that I keep in my planner. Like I'd like somewhere other than my planner to keep them, but these are, most of them are receipts I need to scan and um, submit to my healthcare savings account. But yeah, and then like I've got a random Father's Day card back here for my dad. So like the things that I cannot lose often get stuck in the back of my planner. And I feel like I probably need like, a little delicate mail sorter or something that could live like back here or in front of me on my desk on one of the shelves. I do have a little cubby that would probably like work perfectly for that purpose. I might have to keep my eye out for just a little little slim mail sorter that I can like put receipts that need to be reimbursed, Father's Day or other holiday cards that I like it's just not time yet to like sign them and give them so and then I wanted to grab this planner because a couple months ago I unboxed this planner and this planner the two binders and I decided because it was still like early spring I decided to use this one and I've been liking it the difficulty is my planner is getting thicker and these rings are bigger than these rings. So I feel like I am running out of time to be able to use this planner. <laughs> um, I have a feeling by August, I'm gonna need to be back into this one or maybe my solid pink one. But I really wanna use this planner. So we're gonna start this vlog off with a bit of a plan with me. I'm gonna set you up on a time lapse while I switch everything over set up the new week, set up June, and then I'll talk you through, because I am switching some things for June. So yeah, I'm going to get all of this sorted out, and then we will see how I feel, and hopefully I can get some writing done. Scrivener is telling me I need to write like just under, I think it's just under 1800 words. Yeah, 1793. Um, and I really need to try to do that. I don't want to not do that. I don't want to start the week off without writing. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to write for at least an hour. If I don't get to 1700 or 1800, that's fine. 2000 will be my goal. I think 1000 is my minimum goal. If I can at least get a thousand words in one hour, I will be happy. And then we'll just see how my headache is doing. Cause I do think unfortunately, Part of the problem with headaches is probably screens. It's just not ideal. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to like limit how much time I'm looking at my computer. So enough rambling. I'm gonna get to planning. I need to get out my stickers and yeah, just dive into this.
Okay, so I have put the old binder away. So it is now up there with my other binders. And then I have started an archive binder. I need to get some more of these for the future because um, this will be for 2022. So I have one back there for 2021 and that has all of last year's pages and my year compass for last year as well. The difficulty or like the thing you have to consider when you use a, a six ring binder planner system as opposed to a pre-printed pre -printed bound, hard bound or spiral bound planner is the pages need to go somewhere eventually if you want to keep using the binder, which I do. I'd like to have, I've got four right now. I'd like to have like four or five. I might get more in the future, but I like to have a few that like seasonally I can switch them up. So like this is beautiful, I think for spring and summer, but then I've got other ones that I think are a little bit more appropriate for autumn and winter. And then it keeps my planner feeling fresh and updated rather than living with the same aesthetic kind of for a whole year or more as was the case with the, I think it was an 18 month calendar I had from Fringe Studio. After about halfway through that planner, I was ready for something different, but I didn't want to abandon it when I still had so many pages left. So I'm really liking the six ring binder system, but it does mean I have to have somewhere for archives. So for now in here, this used to be the dashboard. Um, I'll probably come back to this little divider pocket folder thing in the fall and with the fall leaves and stuff. So I've moved it in here for now. I've also moved this in here for now. And then I've got my year compass in here as well as January through March, I think. Yeah, through March. So the first three months of this year are now in here. So I still have April and May in here as well as June and the rest of the month or the rest of the year. So this I'm just going to make a place for probably up here so that it's on the desk. I've got access to it. If I need to refer back to any of those pages from the first few months, I will have access to them, but then they're not taking up space in here. So in here, I found this in a set that I had bought. It's just a clear page with this like gold foil overlay. I thought that was really cute. And then I've just, this is just a plain piece of like cardstock that I've cut down to size and then six hole punched. And I've got this really pretty little like, I think I found this in the scrapbooking aisle. It's just decorative cards. I've got more of them. So I thought that was really pretty. And then I've got the front bit of the Charm Life Master Planner. So all of the calendar bits, all the things that would be at the front of a planner, I've kept those, but then the month actually starts with April. So I've got all of my stuff from April. May is still in here. I have now set up for June. So the last two days of May, because I was using the week on two pages from the Charmed Life Master Planner, which is by Alexis Geostra. She's got a YouTube channel. I've been using her pages, which she very kindly gifted me the 2022 planner. It's still, you know, the first half of the year, but already, like, I, I, I do look at planners. I look at planners when I'm out at Target. I haven't seen anything that I like more than this. So, so far, I'm probably going to stick with this for next year and I will purchase it myself. Because I'm using the week on two pages, it would have then picked up with Monday the 30th as part of the next month's week on two page. So that kind of left me with not having these last two days of May. So I've just printed them out on their own. It just kind of worked out that they could print front and back on their own as daily pages. So this is what I'm using for today and tomorrow. And then we go in to June. So I've got June on two pages. Then I've got my monthly kind of brain dump. I've been doing a summer brain dump, which I've divided up into creative tasks, business tasks, and personal tasks. And so then this month and next month I can go through. I've already taken some of these 
and put them over here. These are the ones I want to try to do this month and then I can do the same thing for July and then anything that remains I can do for August. And then I just color code it. So purple is personal tasks, blue is like business and admin tasks, and pink is anything creative. So writing, outlining, cover design work, filming YouTube videos. There's a couple of YouTube videos I want to try to film aside from the kind of daily vlogs that I do. Um, and so that's kind of my brain dump system. Haven't filled out this page yet, but this kind of helps me get a little bit more specific about monthly objectives. So I can kind of have three main objectives and then break it down into tasks for that. And then there's like a weekly checklist and a daily checklist. Then we get into all of the daily pages. So I've just kind of decorated for this week up to Saturday. I haven't done Sunday. And then one thing I think I want to do is for the weekdays just highlight the date and then for the weekends highlight the whole thing just so that somehow I'm differentiating between the weekends and the weekdays. So on Sunday I'll probably decorate Sunday and all of next week. And then towards the back um, after June I just have I've got the monthly review page um, that's a separate download I got from her and then we get into July I've printed out the monthly pages through the rest of the year so if there's something for September that I want to put a date down and just mark it down I can do that but I don't have the weekly pages so I'm kind of printing out the weekly pages month to month by month as I go along. And then I've just got some of the project, another divider, some of the project planning inserts, and then some random stickers at the end. And then I've got my pen from my friend Cheska. The reason I'm doing the daily pages as opposed to the weekly pages is because June is supposed <laughs> to be the month where I start getting a little bit more structured, a little bit more diligent isn't the word. As structured is just the best way I can kind of say. I'm trying to have a little bit more structure to my day, still give myself plenty of time to relax. Like on today's schedule, it was really just publish the vlog at 10 a.m. And then I'm gonna cook some chili tonight because I've got some ground turkey that needs to be used up. And then I'm gonna relax this evening. You know, some days I've got appointments either for telehealth calls or running errands. I'm trying to be a little bit more consistent with blocking out like two hours a day to write and blocking out one to two hours a day to work on my coaching business and one hour a day to work on book admin stuff like something marketing related or creating social media graphics or setting up a Kindle countdown deal. So I'm just trying to be a little bit more consistent throughout the summer of still giving myself plenty of time to rest but also giving myself just a little bit more time like designated time each day to spend on these different things and not necessarily forcing myself to get a certain amount done each day but just kind of showing up every day and saying I'm going to sit down and write for one hour or for two hours or I'm gonna work on my coaching business for 45 minutes today and just setting that timer and however much work I get done in that time great and whatever doesn't get done in that time I can do another day. That's kind of where that is going. So I thought using the daily pages would help me be a little bit more like able to plan out, okay, from this hour to this hour, I'm focusing on writing. From this time to this time, I'm focusing on coaching business stuff. But then also lets me still put in time to do a workout or go run errands or anything else that I want to do, sleep in. Like I'm trying to let myself sleep until 9 or 10 most mornings and I'm trying to go to bed before midnight most evenings unless like last night I just can't sleep for whatever reason. The pro and con of the daily pages is the, the con is you can't see your whole week at one glance which is why I normally prefer the week on two pages because I can still set it up 
in a kind of daily hourly fashion and kind of see my schedule if I want to do it that way or I can have it set up as tasks and schedule um, and just list out whatever appointments I have. So there's a lot of flexibility in the week on two pages that lets me then see my whole week in like one two page spread. With the daily pages, you're really only ever seeing two days at a time. The pro of only being able to see one or two days is it really keeps me kind of in the present day. It doesn't let me look ahead unintentionally, like I've got to intentionally flip a page if I'm on Monday to look ahead to Friday. Um, whereas on my week on two pages, I'm just, it's like, like Friday's always there on Monday. Like I can always see Friday, even if it's still the beginning of the week. And so the daily pages do kind of tend to keep me in the present moment a little bit more. I figured for June and then I'm going to give it at least a week of using the, the dailies. Um, and then I think maybe sometime around like the 14th or 15th, I'll make a decision of if I want to print out the daily pages for July or if I want to switch back to the week on two pages. We'll see how it goes for June. So yeah, someone had asked in a video um, the last time I did like a brief planning, like what if I could show the inside of my planner and I thought since I wanted to set it up in this binder for this month and since I was switching to different pages, I could show you kind of a little bit of both and why I like both the week on two pages and the day on one page. And yeah, as I said, these pages have been gifted, but this video isn't sponsored. I've been following Alexis for years now. I have been a paying customer in the past and will be a paying customer again at some point in the future. That's how I've set up my planner. It is now nearly four o'clock. I wanted to start cooking the chili at about five. I'm gonna start writing. I think I'm up to chapter 11. Time to get the candle lit, music going, all that good stuff, and get writing. setting. I'm feeling very proud of myself for today. <laughs> I got quite a bit done, so that's good. Now my brain is tired. So writing has gone well. I was just flipping through this book earlier, which I picked up years ago, because it's been years since the last time I visited Mineral Point, which is one of the towns where my family is from here in the U.S. and Wisconsin, and it's the town that Olsenberg is kind of loosely based on. So for the Independent Heart series, I wanted a fictional town so that I could do whatever I wanted with it, but I do like using real towns. I like writing real spaces. So like with the Across the Pond books, I love writing London because like London is just such a fun city to set a book in and to write as an author. And there's little fictional places within London that I've made up for the purposes of the book, but then there's a lot of real places. And then More Than Fate, my character is based in Bath, which I've also been to 
and no for independent hearts i knew i wanted to make up a town for this series but i do use a lot of references from mineral point from the real town and this book has pictures of a lot of the old buildings around town and because I've mirrored the kind of immigrant history and the way that the town has been built by Cornish miners and Scandinavian and like German farmers and things like that the architecture would be the same. I like looking through books like that just to give me inspiration and stuff. I can do what I want because the town is fictional but I do like kind of having it based on Mineral Point. I remember when the Bookshop of Possibilities came out and I was sharing the pictures on social on my social media, some of my family who are from Mineral Point looked at the cover and were like, oh, that looks like a building back in Mineral Point. And I'm like, it's because I used one of the buildings back in Mineral Point as a reference. I changed things, but it still definitely is very strongly influenced. There's some things I need to go back earlier in the draft and change. I think there's going to be almost like a draft 1.2 before I send out that first draft, but I'm at 60,000 words, a little over 60,000 words, so I'm cranking through this. So I'm hoping I can get it done earlier in June and then have until the end of June to go back through. I've been in one of my note in my project notebook. I've been making notes of things I know I need to go back and do. Even with a strong outline, there's stuff, there's ideas that come up as I'm writing, which is why it just always baffles me when people say they don't like outlining because they feel it takes all the surprises out of writing. I have a 20,000 word outline and I'm still getting surprised every day. So I don't know how that works. I wrote a couple scenes today between the two main characters that were not part of the outline. They just kind of popped up. This book still has lots of surprises for me, which I enjoy. I'm really enjoying that. We're kind of at a point with this where like the story is taking shape and it is coming together and I'm starting to see the kind of finer detail of the bigger picture coming together. Like with the 20,000 some word outline, it's kind of a case of I can see the big picture, I can see the real kind of broad strokes of the painting, but there's no, there's none of those little fine details. And now the fine details are starting to come into place and I'm really liking it. It's different than book one. This one doesn't feel quite as personal something happened with book one that I still can't describe but there was something about the story and the kind of theme subplot sub theme of the importance of grandmothers and stuff that just made that book feel really personal and really cathartic in some ways and I did not even with my outline and everything like I did not expect that and going into this one I kind of prepared myself, I'm like, th that won't happen with this one. It wasn't supposed to happen with the first one, so don't expect it to happen with the second one. But it's still ending up a little bit more complicated, just a little bit more depth to this one than I was expecting. Not in the same way as book one, but I don't know, I feel like, I feel like Lydia is starting to reveal herself to me a little bit more in a way that I didn't quite expect, but in a way that's been very interesting and is making me think that she's probably going to continue undergoing a bit of an evolution as I write the rest of the first draft and then the subsequent drafts. I'm starting to kind of feel like my initial idea that this would be my kind of easy, simple, written purely to market, meant to just kind of have one series that I could just kind of knock out a new draft every year, no problem, easy peasy. This was supposed to be the simple series. And I'm starting to feel like that's not going to be the case. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like these books are just going to have a little bit more to them. So yeah, it's not the same as book one. It It is taking a different tone, but yeah, it's still... It's interesting. 
you know, I thought I had this really great outline and I knew exactly what's going what was going to happen. And I thought this was going to be a much simpler and more straightforward story. I'm just about halfway through and yeah, these characters are they're kind of surprising me. So, but I like that. I like that. That's the fun part of writing. It, it, it really is. Like you're in control as the author, but there's also something that's very out of your control as the author. And if you if you think about it too much, it almost feels a little bit crazy. But yeah, I, my fellow authors who follow me, you can let me know what you think. But there just is something about writing, even when you think you know, even when you've got that outline and you think you know what you're doing, your characters are right there to tell you, yeah, you don't know anything. <laughs> So that's kind of where I'm at today, but I've had a very nice cozy afternoon. I'm gonna go get on with my evening. I need to go relax, figure out what I'm watching, get some dinner, and just settle in for a nice quiet evening. <laughs> It is now the end of the evening. I'm feeling very tired. I've been watching Downton Abbey for the millionth time. It just felt right because I've seen it a million times so I don't have to pay that much attention. So I've just been like playing games on my iPad and stuff like that. I'm gonna say goodbye and end this vlog. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. All of that great stuff. Our question of the vlog, if you use a planner, do you prefer like weekly pages or daily pages? I'd like to know. Or if you don't use a planner or you just don't want to answer the question, you can leave me, I think there's like a calendar emoji. I know there are notebook emojis, so leave me just planner related emojis to let me know which one of you lovely people made it all the way to the end of this vlog. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye!